let's talk about transporting antibodies. So uh, plasma cells uh, typically reside in the bone marrow. They return, the B cells returning back to the bone marrow, or plasma cells reside in lymphoid tissue. Either way, when B cells, specifically plasma cells, are releasing antibodies, secreting them, uh, they typically enter the lymph the tissue, I'm sorry, lymph uh, fluid, or the blood plasma. So I've drawn here the bloodstream, and I've drawn some tissue, which may be infected as well. And we need to be able to allow antibodies to get into the tissue. So how is that going to work? Let's see. So um, IgM, forced antibody to be secreted, forms a pentamer, uh, stays primarily in the blood or in the lymph uh, fluid. Uh, it's a very large molecule, this pentamer. And IgM, really good to uh, attack pathogens in the bloodstream, bind to them, recognize them, and call over the C1 molecule to activate the classical pathway of complement. Now let's say that a few days have gone by and some uh, B cells have isotype switched and they are secreting now IgG that will bind this pathogen as well. Now this IgG is a little higher affinity, that's great. So how's IgG gonna help us clear the infection? Well, it could attack the pathogen directly like this. It could bind to it and we know that IgG can also activate the classical pathway of complement. What else is IgG going to do? Well, one thing IgG can do is it can be um, transported into tissues. And IgG, it being small, uh, can move into the uh, interstitial fluid of tissues two different ways. One is by pinocytosis, which is the process by which endothelial cells lining uh, the blood vessel walls actually will pinch off and take a little bit of fluid, a little bit of blood plasma, and anything that's in it, and bring it across the cell. So it pinches off some uh, fluid, some blood plasma, and if IgG happens to be floating in that plasma, then IgG will be transported across the blood vessel wall and, sec and secreted into the uh, tissues, into the interstitial fluid of the tissues. That would be great. There's another way. It involves a transport receptor. So there are proteins on the surface of endothelial cells pointing toward the blood vessel, uh, the, the blood side. These proteins are called the Bramble receptor, sometimes abbreviated FCRN. These are going to be proteins that are going to help us transport IgG specifically from the blood into tissues. So how is this going to work? Well, the Bramble receptor binds the FC gamma region of IgG. So recall the FC region of an antibody, that's the uh, the constant region where the two heavy chain proteins are. So the Bramble receptor uh, binds with high affinity the FC gamma region of IgG. So when this binding occurs, these re Bramble receptors actually pinch off and enter the cell and transport the uh, antibody to the other side of the cell. So you now have movement of antibody from the circulatory system, from the blood, into tissues. So we can transport IgG across uh, blood cell walls, uh, blood vessel walls. And now when IgG is in there, IgG can do a number of things to attack pathogens. Activate complement in there, um, help uh, with opsonization, um, helping macrophages detect an infection, and we'll get to that later. So, um, but this is one way to show you how IgG can cross blood vessel walls. So we weren't talking necessarily about um, inflammation here. With inflammation, you have increased vascular permeability and IgG could pass through uh, between um, the, uh, um, the endothelial cells. But this is actually a much more common way for IgG to get transported into all sorts of tissues all over the body. Um, via the Bramble receptor. The other uh, thing that the Bramble receptor is involved in is transporting IgG into the fetal blood supply across the placenta. So if a woman is pregnant and she makes IgG herself, that IgG will move from her bloodstream into the fetus's bloodstream across the placenta because the blood vessels in the placenta also have the, F, the uh, Bramble receptor. So this is an example of the passive 
uh, transfer of immunity or passive immunity. Passive immunity typically refers to um, you not making your own antibodies, but somebody else making them for you. And um, so when an infant is born, uh, an infant comes preloaded with maternal IgG in their bloodstream. That's something, what a great benefit. So that's IgG and the Bramble receptor. Let's talk about IgA and its transport into various locations in the body. So now let's talk about the different tracts, the GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, the respiratory tract, the urogenital tract, or bronchial tract, um, various mucosal services. So you've got all these uh, organ systems that are uh, lined with epithelial cells, lined with epithelial tissue, and you could have pathogens in the, the lumen of these tubes. So how are we going to combat pathogens in the lumen of these tubes? So let's say that we have identified the pathogen and we have activated a B cell in some lymphoid tissue. Now here I'm showing the GALT, BALT, or MALT. Remember those are gastro-GI-associated or bronchial-associated or mucosal-associated lymphoid tissues. So they're just lymphoid tissues, very similar to lymph nodes. They've got B cells, they've got T cells. B cells can activate there. And if a B cell activates, it will differentiate into a hopefully a plasma cell and it will secrete a certain isotype of antibody and it might be IgA, for example, maybe uh, the helper T cell says, you know what, this pathogen, we need IgA to fight it. So the helper T cell will release cytokines to tell the B cell to isotype switch to make IgA. So how is IgA going to help us here? Well, IgA can exist as a monomer, enter the bloodstream. It could also exist as a dimer, linked together via a J chain protein. And this IgA dimer can actually be transported into different uh, organ systems, from the lymphatic system into these other organ systems via a protein called the poly-IG receptor. So the poly-IG receptor is going to be expressed on the um, cells that you find lining these various tracts, like the GI tract or the respiratory tract or the urogenital tract. And what the poly-IG receptor does is it grabs the uh, dimeric IgA and transports it across that uh, layer of cells and releases it into the lumen of that tract. So this process is known as transcytosis. Basically, you're moving uh, this uh, dimer, dimeric IgA into a new organ system, and you're moving it across this epithelial barrier. And so now you've got IgA, or something we call secretory IgA, because we have secreted it. It gets processed a little, you don't have to worry about the processing, but this secretory IgA, these dimers, are great for combating an infection that you might find in your GI tract or in your respiratory tract or any of the other tubes that you have. So if there's an anti if there's a pathogen in one of these tubes, then the secretory IgA can bind up the pathogen. This is great for neutralization, preventing the pathogen from attaching to your uh, tubes and allowing the pathogen to be flushed out of the tract via mucus or other fluid, coughing, vomiting, uh, uh, anything else really, uh, uh, getting the pathogen to flush out of this system. So that's what secretory IgA is. It's dimeric IgA transported across the epithelial layer using the poly-IG receptor. Um, this is also used to transport uh, IgA in the mammary glands across the mammary ducts into milk. So when a woman is nursing her infant, uh, the uh, milk contains uh, secretory IgA, this is dimeric IgA, another example of the passive transfer of immunity. So when an infant is nursing in the milk, you find obviously nutrients, you find sugars, um, you find proteins, you also find IgA. So the IgA will go from uh, the maternal uh, mammary glands into the milk, into the infant's GI tract. And so the GI tract of an infant is coated with uh, the maternal IgA, another example of the passive transfer of immunity. So these are two ways where IgG and IgA can be transported and help protect various sites in the body.